awesome people. Welcome to the Kachang Family YouTube channel. In this episode, I just want to make a quick video about what is elimination communication because I couldn't find one that just give you a quick definition for somebody who has no idea what it is or maybe you're somebody who wants to do EC and you want to share it to somebody else. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Anissa and I summarize chapters from parenting books into short videos every Friday. I also make videos about our own personal parenting style. You can watch this video here for more information about elimination communication if you have no idea. It'll give you a bit of the background history and how it's actually done in a lot of different cultures and not popular in the Western culture. And then some vocabulary word, elimination communication is also known as EC, which is also known as infant potty training. It's all the same. The first thing I would tell somebody who has no idea what I'm talking about is elimination communication, also known as EC, is not potty training. It is not potty training your infant. It is far, far from it. It is the caregiver learning how the baby communicates its elimination needs, when it needs to pee or poop, what it does exactly, and then the caregiver acting upon that by removing the diaper, holding the baby over a little potty, and letting it eliminate outside of the diaper. Still confused? I'm gonna explain it in another way. Say you have a dog, a cat, or any other animal that doesn't speak your language. How does your dog communicate it needs to go to the bathroom? It might whine, go to the door, fuss a little bit, growl, um, bark at you, look at the door, and then you look at the dog and you open the door thinking that's what it needs. It goes outside, pees, and then comes back into the house. So it's very similar to that. The baby is also communicating it needs to eliminate by making a fuss, a certain face, a grunt, a maybe push away from something, refusing something. And then that is essentially a cue to the caregiver that it needs to do something and that may be to eliminate itself and release its bodily fluids. If you've never heard about EC, you probably think I'm crazy or you think the person who sent you this video is crazy. Well, that's okay. It's very, it's not common in the Western culture to practice EC. As a parent or a caregiver, after spending so much time with a newborn, an infant, your baby, you start to learn how the baby communicates. You might start to recognize a certain cry, a cue, when the baby communicates that it's hungry, tired, sleepy, overstimulated, fearful, and those are cues the babies are giving to you saying that it needs something and you as a caregiver can act upon it. Babies at a very young age are communicating discomfort, like when they need to pee or poop. We teach them to pee or poop in the diaper even if it might seem uncomfortable to them and they just have to get used to it and it becomes part of their normal life. I don't think I want to pee or poop in my diaper. I used to work at the hospital with adults and whenever somebody did do a bowel movement in their diaper, they wanted it to be removed and changed right away. I don't think babies naturally want to poop in their diaper. I think they learn to get used to it. Then later on as they get older and become toddlers, we have to teach them that peeing and pooping in the diaper is not okay and that they need to start using the little potty. So EC is all about getting your baby used to peeing and pooping outside of the diaper. Then when it comes to potty training, since they are used to using the potty, the transition from EC to potty train is a shorter time frame than some baby who hasn't been exposed to it at all. As I said, EC is not potty training. So if you're doing EC, you still have to potty train them later on as a toddler. I made a video here on the 10 tips for potty training and I specifically use these tips as I was transitioning my baby from EC to potty train. EC is all about the baby communicating its elimination needs to the caregiver and then the caregiver acting upon that. Potty training happens when they're about a toddler and now you're teaching them to take themselves to the potty with less and less assistance as they get older. 
That's all I have for today. I hope you found this video helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and post in the description box below other books that you um, can read and YouTube channels that are dedicated to this topic specifically. Stay awesome and with love from the Kajang family to yours. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.